interesting. So let's talk about this. So this is courtesy of um, Resident Advisor. So it's an update on the Beatport nonsense that's happening at the moment, right? I think I covered it before where former Beatport employees were alleging that people within upper management were, you know, bullying and doing casual racism and sexism and all this sort of nonsense and basically, you know, creating a very toxic work environment. And the main CEO there, Rob McDaniels, really came out of it looking terrible, right? Because he seemed to be very out of touch and just seemed to be like a completely ignorant person who probably had no business being the CEO of such a um, illustrious and important brand within dance music, right? Somebody that probably shouldn't have that position in the slightest because he doesn't really know what's going on in culture. He has no idea his position. He has no idea on what, you know, the history of the industry she is like zero he's just completely clueless and ignorant and seems like those kind of people that is just wrong and strong for all the wrong reasons so there's been an update here courtesy of resident advisor where it says the Beatport CEO rejects claims of toxic work culture and calls the Vice article so disappointing. So the Vice article, I'm assuming, went through all the journalistic standards, loads of research, loads of cross-referencing, loads of kind of double-checking to make sure the things that were said were actually said. But of course, the Beatport CEO says it was all nonsense, it all didn't happen, and the article was disappointing. So let's see what he has to say. Rob McDaniel, CEO of Beatport Group, has disputed allegations of a toxic work culture at the music retailer where um, that were brought to light via a recent Vice article. In a statement on Beat Paul or last week, McDaniels called the Vice piece so disappointing, saying he disagreed, disagreed with the overall portrayal of the company. How about him then? Journalist Annabelle Ross has detailed multiple allegations against workplace racism, bullying and sexism advice, signaling out McDaniels Chief Revenue Officer Jonas Temple and former Berlin Officer General Manager Terry, whatever his name is. And while disagreeing with the article's main message, McDaniels says he sincerely regrets any unjust an unfair treatment of any employee during his time there. Does he regret talking about African tribesmen when that woman was talking about talking about George Floyd and stuff? Does he regret that? He continued. He added, the article doesn't speak to any of the progress and the growth the company has made over the past years to raise awareness of our staff and diversity and work collaboratively within the broader community to shine spotlight on the very issues of our industry. The statement also listed 10, 10 accomplishments related to diversity and inclusion of Beatport over the past two years. These include statistics such as 70% of the engineering team being women on non binary Ah, oh, mate. He's using the same things that they're doing against him, against them. God almighty. Of course, to McDaniels is the above average of software companies to close the statement listed various internal and external projects related to diversity awareness and inclusion many of which according to the statement are ongoing these include unconscious bias training creating a memorial page for George Floyd <laughs> honestly this guy is taking a piss he's so tone deaf it's unbelievable so in order to kind of respond to the allegations of creating a toxic work environment and casual racism, he's now only creating a memorial page for George Floyd in 2022 on Beat Portal. Are, are you for real? Making International Women's Day and Juneteenth company-wide holidays. Holy shit. The allegations in Ross' article are numerous and wide-ranging. McDaniel's casual racism on a Zoom call and the other person obliterating junior employees to Temple mourning the late Eric Marilla. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Did that guy have a what, like a day of remembrance or a moment of silence for Eric Murillo? Oh my god! Who was accused of multiple accounts of rape and allegations? The accused account accepts some of the allegations and rejects others. And the quote here says, "Beatport is not a place that shuns diversity and equality. We embrace it." Says McDaniel's. No, you don't. Beatport is not a killer of voices. Yes, you are. And ideas we cultivate them. No, you do not. We have been through some challenges at the time and have been historic. Have not been historically perfect, but we are far from toxic culture described in the article. Following Ross's article, Black Artist Database suspended his partnership with Beatport or their editorial arm. Um, beat portal and as it conducts an internal review so they still haven't made a final decision back artist database which is hilarious to me but again i understand they're a small team as someone's mentioned in the comments they probably got other things they're dealing with bloody blah 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 but i just find it hilarious that they're still in the internal review stage despite everything that we read in that flipping incredible article courtesy of annabella ross now personally for me i feel like this is absolute nonsense personally let's actually see his statement let's actually feel the things that he's kind of listing as achievements because let's just see his achievements and what he feels like Pete Port has done over the years to kind of rectify this reputation they have of having a toxic work environment because it's all one it's all well and good laughing at this sort of stuff but if they're making efforts to change or they recognize they've done bad then maybe that's a good thing so let's see let's go through the 17 things one 
Forty percent of our main division senior management is female and non-binary. Okay, thirty percent of our engineering team is female and non-binary. Okay, live streams average one third female non-binary and bipop performers. Really, I don't think that's true. Playlists and featured have minimum artist target of twenty-five percent female and non-binary. That's probably a pretty decent thing to put in place. Established um, mandate for all recruiting and high. Also, oh, can I zoom in probably this or not? I oh, can't zoom in. So disappointing. Anyway, cool. You can't zoom in. Okay, cool. Let's go back here again. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Come on, where are you? Where are you? Is that the achievements? Oh, we've got that right there. Um, okay, 10 achievements. So, uh, established mandate for all recruiting and hiring efforts to focus on gender balance results. This includes the following of our uh, fair processes and equal opportunities policy. To be honest, though, what they've put there, the top five, as much as I like to laugh about it, this is probably more than most clubs do. Most nightclubs don't have this, even on their lineups. They don't have these kind of things in place where they basically be like, okay, cool. We're going to try to make sure our lineups or the club nights that we put on, the DJs that we have on our roster are 25% this and that. Do you know what I mean? I think I've even fold a place that I love. Their entire resident DJ lineup is just full of white people. Do you know what I mean? It's like zero. No one, I guess you can maybe say sexuality and stuff is a bit different or how they, um, what's that word called? Um, whatever the term is whatever how they present in terms of um pronouns and stuff can be a bit different but in terms of what they're presenting in terms of what i can see with my eye it's just basically loads of white people do you know what i mean which is quite funny considering how multicultural fold is as an institution so you know even fabric is the same thing as well so it's i feel like even though i should laugh at this and point and take mick at it they're still doing more than some nightclubs do and they get complete ply on it do you know what i mean so let's continue um Number six, establish a goal to achieve one third representation by the end of 2023 across all leadership positions for female, non-binary and BIPOC candidates and believe that we achieved this metric ahead of schedule. It's just so gross to be listed under BIPOC in it. Like, I don't want anyone to refer to me as fucking BIPOC. Like, fuck that shit. Honestly, it's fucking awful. But in this industry, you kind of have to lean into these things if you actually want to get anywhere because it's so fucking difficult to get in and people don't necessarily want to leave the door open. So the only way to do it is to kind of lean on their um, lean on their fucking um, compassion or whatever sympathy that they're trying to portray, understanding or whatnot, and use that to your advantage and then try to basically show and prove once you get the opportunity. That's it, really. But I'm, I'm sure there are people in there that are taking advantage of it, right? That listen themselves or that are trying to fly under the banner of BIPOC and then when they get in, they're fucking terrible at what they do. And But then people are too afraid to tell to tell them that they can't do what they do or they're too afraid to sack them because they look bad. I don't know. But I just, I would hate to be referred to as a BIPOC fucking DJ or BIPOC artist. Like, go fuck yourself. Historically, it's number seven says, historically more than 90% of the DJ's customers have been male, but we're working in the organization to incorporate more diverse voices and communicate tactics to appeal to a broader what how are you going to try to increase the amount of that's an interesting thing evidenced by our recent campaign of great hundred hundred dollar fund to ideas promoting gender diversity so they've got a fund going on to improve di gender diversity that they feel like is going to help them attract more customers that aren't male that's the that's the unfortunate kind of reality of where the scene is at the moment right this is what it is. For as much as they want to push whatever they want to push in terms of representation, the unfortunate reality is that 90% of the customers who buy stuff on Beatport are men. Cisgendered men, I'd imagine for the most part, right? Maybe less than 90. Maybe they, let's say 8% are cisgendered men. The rest are maybe, you know, um, that kind of occupy the, you know, the range in terms of queer and LGBTQ and gay and whatnot. But that's a lot of dudes, right? So you're going to have to try to somehow get all those dudes on board with all the stuff above here it's not an easy task at all in the slightest especially in the industry where i feel like most people generally don't give a fuck about all this stuff i feel like they, they just basically play nice and act like they do because they don't want to get cancelled online but i think in real life they could care less for the most part because it doesn't actually affect their actual day-to-day -day life i don't feel like but hey what do i know it continues Number eight, creation of a diversity, inclusion and social action committee in early 2020. I don't know what that means. It's just loads of buzzwords. Um, creation of a diversity, and inclusion, and social action. What does that do? What have they done though? They created it, but what they do? So that's a bit of a loose nonsense one. Number nine, establishment of a variety of ongoing DNI training, um, diversity and inclusion, I'm assuming, right? DNI training. <laughs> 
<laughs> Education programs for management across the business. What are they going to do on those DNI trainings? Are they going to play fucking love and basketball to the fucking management team to get them to understand black people or some shit? Like, what are they going to do? <laughs> Number 10, supported numerous non-profit organizations in our community over the past few years with sponsorships and fundraising efforts to raise money for gender inclusion and equality issues in our community society. You know what this reads like? This reads like, you know, when you're doing your CV and you put your job experience and you put your achievements underneath and you just start listing things that you had nothing to do with to kind of make yourself look better. This is what it basically looks like. Just list of stuff that does nothing, doesn't really add to anything. It doesn't really say much in general because Personally, for me, I believe the article that Annabella Ross wrote. I believe what those people said in terms of how they they experienced in terms of what they went through there. And it's unfortunate, but at least for the most part, they're acknowledging it and they see they've, they've not made, you know, they're trying to make amends. But I believe everything that's written in the article, I don't feel like it was disappointing or it didn't reflect what they what they what they are as a company or how they are as a company. Just look at that. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean, I don't know. Look, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's all nonsense. Like I said, for me, I don't, I don't necessarily see any big change here coming anytime soon, because I feel like you know we already have less people really giving a shit about women getting assaulted and raped and shit at festivals and whatnot. If people don't give a fuck about that in the hospitality industry, that I would imagine is you know predominantly sort of dominated by women in an industry like dance music, then I don't think all this sort of stuff is going to go anywhere anytime soon. If anything, this conversation is maybe good to have because it kind of raises people's awareness and it maybe allows people that look like myself to kind of have the opportunity to maybe start some things, gain a fund, maybe slip through the cracks and get like a affirmative action sort of like DJ gig somewhere and then use that to boost your profile. There are some things that you could do, but overall, will it actually change anything? I don't think so. I'm too pessimistic about this shit. I've seen too much horrible things in this scene for me to feel like a few bullet points and a flipping one note on the sheet of paper on a PDF is actually going to change anything for me personally. But I do appreciate the Vice article, Cursey of Annabella Ross. I feel like everyone should check it out if they haven't already because I feel like that's going to definitely make a change going forward.